Welcome to the Brilliant Black Man Show, created to bring to light the success stories of black men all around the world. It is the mission and goal of Melissa Johnson to share these incredible, talented, and successful men with viewers across the country. Wake up, America, and listen to the interviews of these strong black men who are making a difference in their family, community, boardroom, and the world. They are building empires and leaving a legacy. Their life story and success matters, and it's Melissa's goal to change the narrative of how the black man is portrayed in the media, streets, home, workplace, and beyond. Join Melissa on a journey to bring awareness to the brilliance of the black man on the Transformation Network. Follow the interviews as these men speak on the importance of entrepreneurship, education, financial literacy, legacy building, and building black businesses within their communities. Now, here is your host. Hello there, Marlon. Yes, how you doing, Ms. Johnson? I'm fine. This is Marlon Reed from Marlon Reed Production, the author of The Diary of a Changed Man, his autobiography. He's on set filming today. How do you feel about all of this? Man, I'm, I'm so excited, Ms. Johnson. This, this is like a blessing, a, a dream come true, just to be able to really show God's glory through my story is, is, is the objective to, you know, that's the um, message that we're trying to bring through this film. Yeah, so. wow. What a great message. I read some of your book. I couldn't get through the whole book, Thank but you. I read a lot of that book. And the first thing I could say was, wow, I just Thank could you. not believe it. You never know a person's journey and how they got here. And so, um, I was truly amazed because I'm on the other side, so I see where you're yes, at now. Yes. Yeah. But from, for you to come from that place and to be where you're at now is a blessing from the Lord. And it shows Amen. His power in our lives. Amen. You know yes, that He has purpose, He has destiny for us regardless of how we're born, regardless of our parents, regardless of what we may deemed to be mistakes. Yes. God can turn all of that around. When he say all things work together for our good, mm. there's a message in yes, that. It yes, and it has indeed. definitely worked together for your good. Yes. And I'm a living witness today to to see this changed man. Thank Here he you. is, yes. the changed man. The change yes, man. man. Yes. And so I love redemption stories. Amen. I really love um, how someone can go on a journey of transformation because I know transformation is not easy. Not at all. It's it's hard work to be transformed yes. into the person that God would have you to be. But yes. look at you now yes. and so you're a testimony to other people that are on this journey. You do not have to stay where you're at. Not you can at be also changed by the power of God. You have to yes. want it. Amen. You have to desire. You have to go and get it. Amen. And you too can have this transformed life. It's just changing That's from it. where you're at to where God I want you to be it. it's just a change in direction so um, yes. I'm just encouraged on today is so excited to um, share your story Thank this you. is not the interview <laughs> we're just giving you a little taste of what the interview will be like um, we're gonna interview hopefully a couple of hours from now yes. we're on set so I'm just watching them um, film his movie so what do you think about the film while I have oh. you here what do you think about oh, the man. film? It's, it's coming along so great that mm -hmm. you know all the great actors um, I was blessed to be able to have on my first time uh, doing the film and doing my story to have so many super actors like Trey Chaney and uh, Kim, Ms. Kimmy uh, Workman, you know, and Antoine Jones and Barry uh, Austin. Uh, these are some great actors that already have uh, films out. So to be able to be blessed through their talent, the actors and actresses, I'm excited, you know, just you know, started this in 2014 when I used to go out on the streets in Philly, speaking around, you know, the city on violence and, you know, spreading the gospel of Christ. And um, I used to always get asked about a book. So it started in 2014 with the, just the book. And then here we is, 2017, the book came out, The Diary of a Changed Man. And here it is, 2022. We, we, we filming the, the, the film, the short film, which is a two-part film. Wow. And, uh, I'm blessed. I'm blessed, Miss Johnson. Wow. God is, wow. God is, God, when, when we say God is amazing, 
Um, you know, you're looking at me, you're looking at Ms. Johnson and everybody else that God touched and blessed. You know, it's it's real. It's yeah. real. The, the power of prayer, you know, the belief system, you know, ministry is real. Please it's believe real. that. Yeah. Thank you. And it's just so many stories that I can get from your story, if I can say it that way. Mm -hmm. So many practical applications, I'll say it that way, that you can take away from your story. Yeah. And um, the one that I like to take away is, again, the redemption part. Yeah. I think about how you were born. I think mm -hmm. about... Mm. I mean, I just, when I read it, I Rest was just, peace to my mother. yes, I, I was her. just like, wow. And, yeah. you know, I just, sometimes we just don't understand the decisions that our parents have to make, why yes. they did what they did. Yes. Um, but what we have to do is we have to be at a place where we can forgive in order for us to move forward. Thank God you were able to forgive yes. what had happened to you yes. because you had no um, choice in the matter. Yes. This is just how it it happened to you. Yes. Thank God you had the ability. God gave you the ability to be able to forgive and then from there to get healing. Yes. Um, when when devastating um, um, things happen in your life, come in your life, trauma come in your life, sometimes yes. you need to seek out help. Yes. <laughs> you got to yes. seek out help, professional help sometimes yes. and sometimes more than just professional help in order to move forward. So yes. um, that's one of the applications that I pull from that, seeking help, not being comfortable with where you were at, not being comfortable with that life of crime, the life of the streets, the life of drugs and violence, and to see that there was something greater in you. Yes, God and, saw it. Yes. He's seen the future. And you know, a lot of times we miss out on the tools that God give us because it's in the form of our needs instead of our wants mm -hmm. and so we lose out on a blessing i lost out on a blessing many times because it's already written with god so god already seen this i didn't see this 17 years ago mm -hmm. when i was out there in the streets i didn't but god seen it and it's like yo if you don't take these tools right. that i'm giving you you know you're not going to make it to the blessing that's I right i can't keep saving you you know what i mean you gotta I, save I, yourself I can, now. but you gotta do some work that's or right. else you know you're gonna perish from the flesh here, man. You know what I mean? Right. The wrong way. You know what I mean? Not making right with yourself or God. So, and I understand my mother, I had went through her same journey. You know, God, I was so, you know, angry at her that God took me through her journey to understand the lifestyle that she lived. And I lived the same life. I just got a chance to live past 28. She didn't. Right. You know, so God right. took me through that same phase for us go to drug life and thought I had a, a, a child at 16 and I did all the same same story mm. I went through and, and didn't understand it then until now to wow. 2005 when I got saved you know surrendered to God and, uh, wow then, and look it's a blessing but yes it is and it's, there's it's real. <laughs> it is and there's stories there's applications and all that what you said and um I just think, yeah, God knows all things. He knows the beginning and the end. He created you. He knew the purpose, your purpose. However, we have choices because we free will agents. We have choices and sometimes we don't make the right choice. But thank God for second chances. Thank God for giving us and allowing us the opportunity to have a self, yeah, second chance to make better choices and then come back around and do what he has called us to do. So I thank you. Hi, this is Melissa Johnson of WOW Ministries with the Brilliant Black Show, the Brilliant Black Man Show on today with my special guest, Marlon Reed. Hello, Mr. Reed. Yes, how you doing, Ms. Johnson? I'm excellent. Welcome to the show. Oh. This is our part two of the wonderful interview with this great, I would say, book writer, <laughs> now film <laughs> producer. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Who knows what, what is to come? Yes. So I would like to welcome Mr. Marlon Reed to the Brilliant Black Man Show. Welcome to the Brilliant Black Man Show, created to bring to light the success stories of black men all around the world. It is the mission and goal of Melissa Johnson to share these incredible, talented, and successful men with viewers across the country. 
Wake up, America, and listen to the interviews of these strong black men who are making a difference in their family, community, boardroom, and the world. They are building empires and leaving a legacy. Their life story and success matters, and it's Melissa's goal to change the narrative of how the black man is portrayed in the media, streets, home, workplace, and beyond. Join Melissa on a journey to bring awareness to the brilliance of the black man. Follow the interviews as these men speak on the importance of entrepreneurship, education, financial literacy, legacy building, and building black businesses within their communities. Now, here is your host. And welcome back to the Brilliant Black Man Show. This is Melissa Johnson, your host of WOW Ministries. And my guest today is none other than Mr. Marlon Reed from Marlon Reed Production. Welcome again to the show. Thank you. Thank you again, uh, Brilliant Black Man uh, fans and viewers. Thanks for having me. And thank you, uh, Miss Melissa Johnson, for you know having me on your show as well. Honored. Well, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure to bring um, your story, your success um, to the world. So I'm just so excited about um, the interview on today. We started this interview a couple of weeks ago on set at the Diary of a Changed Man. It yes. was actually filming. Um, and so we started it. We did something a little different. Um, we were on set there and um, it was a blessing to meet the producer of the show, some of the actors that was portraying um, some of the characters that's in the book of the Diary of a Changed Man, as well yeah. as to see Mr. Marlon Reed in action. Yes, yes. <laughs> behind the camera so yes. it was a privilege for me to get some of that footage so this particular show is just a little different from my other shows um after this tapes we're going to send this all to my production team and we're going to put everything together all of the footage from the um first interview all of the all of the scenes and all of that we took um, and filmed when we were on set, awesome. as well as this interview. And it's going to encompass the whole um, interview for Mr. Marlon Reed. And you will be able awesome. to view that on several platforms. Um, one will be um, my YouTube channel, the Brilliant Black Man YouTube channel. Please click, subscribe, like. Also on my website, wildministriesllc.com, wildministriesllc.com, and also on the Transformation Network, Transformation Network, Melissa Walker Johnson being the talk show host there, and also on Facebook and also on instagram so we're gonna have it everywhere and then wherever podcasts go we're going we're going there so it's going to actually view in over 164 outlets it's going everywhere and so we pray that someone will be encouraged uplifted by your story by your success. so let's get started are you ready mr reed Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready to show God glory through my story. All right. Amen. All right. Let's get started. We're going to talk a little bit about the beginning of who this man is, Marlon Reed. Let's talk about um, the beginning. Yeah. We know that you are currently um, a husband. You're currently a father. Yes. Um, yeah. You're currently a man of God. You hold so many different roles. I would yeah. like to go back and see how this brilliant man was cultivated. Um, your story starts out a li little different than most stories, um, but it's it's amazing as you look at the different men and i'm going biblical on you i'm sorry the different men in i no, i'm not sorry the different men in the bible um that god used a lot of them or most of them didn't have the best you know story in the beginning i mean they were not perfect men well we know no yes. one is perfect but their story um was not a common story he used um 
he used people that had, can I say, um, not so good history. He used he used um, ordinary yeah. he used ordinary people that had issues. Yeah. Ordinary people yeah. that may not have was born the with the silver spoon in their mouth, or what may not have had the advantages of other people. Um, yeah. He didn't use necessarily successful people. He no. Used ordinary, ordinary people, and they yeah. became extraordinary. He used ordinary Amen. people, and they became extraordinary, and they did just amazing things to build up the kingdom of God. And when I think about the men in the um, biblical stories, I think about you and how you were born and and how you conceived and then how you came into this world um it was a little different but how yes. god at the end of the story because we know the end of the story how god used all of that to create this wonderful man um that yes. you are today this man of god that is spreading um this word all around through his life experiences and yes. that is a testimony to itself that you don't have to stay where you're at um there there is change that can take place in your life if you yes. want, if you want to change yes. you can change you can be transformed and allow all of those bad experiences mixed in with the good to work together yes. mixed in together yes. to for your good and yeah. so sometimes the story may not be good i'm sure at times you wondered why me why is this my yeah. story yes as you sit here now and you can think at this mature state that you're in now you can say well it all worked together for my good it may not have been good that journey may not have been good but some somehow God was able to take all of my experiences and work them together for my good, for his glory, that yes. I can reach more people with my story because I am able to touch them maybe where some may not be able to touch yes. them. Okay, so I'm talking too much now. Let's start at the beginning, Marlon, um, with how you were conceived and what happened after that. And um, you don't have to give us every detail, just the most important parts that you would like to share. Marlon Reed. Okay. Uh, thanks once again to the Brilliant Black Man Show for having me on. And thank you once again, Miss Melissa Johnson, um, to be able to, you know, tell God's story, uh, be able to tell my story and show God's glory. Um, it all started with me being conceived. My mother slept with her um, sister, um, you say baby five or boyfriend, and, you know, that's how I was Steve, and he already had two children by, you know, my aunt. So, you know, that make us cousins and brothers all at the same time. And, you know, she was young and she was on drugs, you know, at, at an early age and um, uh, having me at 17 and out there running the streets and being wild. So she gave me to my grandparents and, you know, they took me on and, and, and raised me. And, um, but it always was a constant battle with her and them um, because she's still saying I was her son. So she can, you know, come and take me whenever she wants to. So that was like a always constant battle with her and my grandmother, you know, uh, arguing, fighting back and forth, not physical fighting, but, far as though like uh arguing you know back and forth and it, it it used to like bother me real bad because my grandmother say bad things about you know my mother and my mother say bad things about her and you know five years later she had another son and um you know she wound up keeping him and i used to wonder why you didn't keep me and you know and um just jealousy and um you know i felt i felt alone and you know, just out of out of out of the ordinary, man. And um, it was just one thing after another, you know, happening in my life. And uh, to speed it up, you know, uh, around 11 years old, my mother passed away from um, HIV. 
and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I got a chance to see her. You know, the hospital was fighting back then in 87 not to let me in because I think back then you had to be 14. I was 11. But they let me up to see her for a few minutes. And, you know, later on that that night, she passed away. So I was just like really struck. And um, uh, <coughs> me. I was really struck. And then, you know, at her funeral, the man that I always looked at as my uncle, you know, he stepped up and told me he was my father. And, you know, I wonder why my grandmother used to always cuss him out and tell him he's no good. And I'm like, that's my uncle. He don't have to do nothing for me. You know, you know, he got to do stuff for his children. And then, you know, um, that really devastated me. And, and, and I went I went home after he told me that I went back to my room and I start talking to God, asking him, what did 11 year old do to 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 him what 11 year old do to God for God to allow all these things one thing after another you know happened to me you know from time I was born up to 11 and uh even being born as a, a you know a drug baby and having complications and you know just all these things being ran over by a car at the age of seven I believe and um just other things that I'm, I didn't put in there. And, and when God didn't answer back, that's when I went and turned into the streets. And uh, Okay, so we're going to stop there before you go to that point. Okay, yeah. so, um, so you were around 11 years old when your mom passed away. Um, prior to that, you were raised by your grandparents, um, your grandmother and your grandfather. Yes. Um, what impact did that period of time have in your life? Was it a time um, that you felt secure or were you still searching because you knew that these were your grandparents and that your mother was out there, but she wasn't actively in your life? And did you know at that point of her lifestyle and could you understand what was actually going on at the tender age of 11? Um, answer the last question. Um, I didn't get to understand her lifestyle until I walked her shoes. Okay. I wound up walking the same lifestyle, but I felt secure because my grandparents, oh man, you know, you know, let them rest in peace, man. You know, they, they did everything, you know, as a parent, you know, puts instill morals in me. Um, everything that I, I know how to do today is because of what they instored in me. Um, and I always told them, like, when I walked out them doors, that was me making a decision every day, walking out them doors. So they did their job. So I was secure. And, and I didn't know what my mother was doing because my grandmother was bold with it. She didn't hide it. So, and um, by so watching... Me, okay, but, let me ask you this, Marlon, and I'm sorry. I made because I know we only have a limited time with you. So sorry for the interruption. Um, as a child, did you have, or as your mother's child, did your mom have any more children? Do you, do you have any siblings by your mom and your father, your biological father? Uh, yes, my biological father. Um, he had he had two more kids, two more by um, your mom with your mom. No, 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 no. With my aunt, he had, all together he got four children by my aunt, and then he got two more other children by his current wife. So that's so six. So your mom only had one child with your father. Yes, but okay. she also she also had another child, which is under me. It's five years um, under me, and okay. um, you know she used to be around him more, and I was like, Lord, jealous. You know, because I love my mother and uh, she used to only come see me like once a year, oh you know, what I mean? and then when she come, it will be for a few minutes or just to come get some sleep or rest. And then she say she go in the store and she she gone. But uh, I understood once I walked them shoes. OK, and so the choice, did you understand the choice Did you um were you able to talk to your mom at any time um, before her um, before her transition to 
um, understand the decisions that she made as it pertained to her life choices as and as well as um, what had occurred with your biological father? Were you able to talk to her prior to her transition? Um, we we had excuse me, we had talks, but she would do most of the talking. I would just listen. And uh, she used to always just have conversations with me when she did come. And she always used to tell me, you know, once you get older, you will understand this conversation. You don't understand it now. But once you get older, you will understand, you know, God willing, you get old enough, you, you'll understand the conversation. So she always talked to me, but I never really got a chance to ask her anything about her decisions or her lifestyle. I, I never got a chance to ask her. Okay, so let's move forward um, past um, that period of time. And so um, she transitioned out of your out of this world at a yeah. young age. I believe she was 28. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. At very young age. And so um, so much had happened to her in the in 28 years. And so um, she transitioned out of here, but she left a legacy in you. And yeah. so your life um, went um, in a different direction. Um, and so now we are at um, the age of 13. Now yeah. we can look at you at the age of 13. I can only imagine from the age of 11 to the age of 13, the turmoil of a young man trying to understand um, his identity, trying to understand um, who he belongs to and why all of this occurred. My mom is gone. The person I thought was my father is not my father. My uncle is actually my father. <laughs> and how did this all happen? And I can understand the turmoil that's going on inside of you. Although you may be in a safe environment physically, yeah. in your mind, your mind was not safe. It's not, it was not at peace. And I could see your mind just um, just roaming, trying to trying to understand and trying to comprehend what has occurred in your life at such a young age. So now we get to the age of 13 and yeah. something um, turns in your mind at the age of 13. Um, so for the first time, 13 at the tender age of 13, um, you get arrested. Tell yeah. us a little bit about that. Uh, well, within the, <clears throat> excuse me, within them two years, um, I was really, really angry, you know, a little bit at my mother. I was a little angry at her because, you know, I wanted to know, like, you know, out of all the men in the world, you know, why him? Mm -hmm. um, and I couldn't answer that, but I was happy to be, you know, alive and, and born. So by then, <clears throat> like, I just turned to the streets. I didn't have to sell drugs because my grandparents, they, you know, they took care of us. You know, by then, my little brother was living with us um, mm -hmm. that my mother had. So, you know, they made sure we, 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 we had, you know, the clothes and everything that we needed, you know, not the, maybe not the, the top fashion, but we had clean clothes, you know, clean shirt, clean pants, wouldn't go out the house with nothing dirty, you know, um, if they had to hand wash it. So me getting into the streets was just being fascinated by. And the streets were where, I'm sorry, I don't think we quite told the viewers exactly where you were raised. This occurred where? On, in North Philadelphia, in, Phil in, 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 in um, Philadelphia, but North Philly. North Philly, okay. Yes. Okay. Um, so I did it because uh, when I started hanging out, you know, with with the guys on the streets, um, I just got to, I just wanted to do it. I just wanted to try it, you know. Um, uh, I just wanted to see what it was like because I seen like these guys, um, you know, selling drugs, looked at fun, you know, it was, you know, of that side of the game. It looked fun. Do you think that it was curiosity or did you have a longing to um, be mischievous or did you have a longing to connect 
or did you feel that in your mind somehow i want to experience ex you know what my mom went through i mean i know you were young but uh -huh. can you can you um recall in your mind what was going on can you because i know that happened at a very young age so i don't yeah. know if you can recall those memories yeah. but are you able to recall those memories of what was going on in your head that would make you choose to step outside of your home and into that lifestyle um it was more curiosity you know okay. like i said you know older people i used to be around like uh you know two older brothers at the time and you know seeing what they was doing it was going around my odd house and had a little bit more freedom to be in the streets because you know at home i really couldn't be in the streets um my grandmother and them used to you know was a tight it was a tight shift so it was curiosity just watching them <clears throat> and seeing what they doing and it looked fun. And so I tried it and, you know, about a half hour later, I got, I got locked up the first time I tried. So I should have known that it wasn't for me, you know? <laughs> wow. So you got locked up for doing what Marlon? Uh, for selling drugs. Uh, okay. And at that time, what type of drugs were you selling? Uh, crack, crack cocaine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so um, you go to the streets and of course they welcome you with open arms. Yes. <laughs> and so the first, the first initiation, of course, they want you to go out and they want you to sell drugs. Um, you being a minor, the, um, the, I guess the offense is different. You being a minor versus being an adult. So yes. the first time you go out, you selling this, you probably don't know what you're doing but you're just curious trying to do something yes. um, and you get caught. And so how did you get caught? So the person you were selling the drugs to was law enforcement or as you were selling the drugs, law enforcement was around you. Uh, as, as I was selling the law enforcement, um, they, they just pulled up and I guess they was, we seen them at the top of the block, but we weren't really paying them no mind. We thought they wasn't watching us. And uh man, what is he following me? And uh, I'm like, uh next thing I know when I looked up, they wasn't at the top of the block no more. And they pulled up and said, You, you in that black jacket, come here. And I just panicked and I ran. And uh they chased me for about a block and they and they caught me. And when I got caught, I remember the police officer said something that stuck with me to this day that I use to this I'm losing you, Marlon. Keep going. And and it's a whole lot of stuff waiting for you down the line, or you can make this your ending and take this as a lesson and move on because you're only 13. And of course, I made it my beginning. You made it your beginning. Now, yeah. 13. So the next um 16 years. So at this at 13, you go to juvenile, correct? Correct. Okay, so you're in and out of the system for the next 16 years. You're in and out of the system. So right. there's a difference from 13 to 18. So when you get to become 18, now you've been in and out of juvenile. You've been in and out of the system. Yes. Um, are you still in school at this point or are you just hanging out in the streets? At this point, man, I got kicked out of so many schools. Okay. Um, I think I think I was I was 18. And uh, when I got kicked out of my last school, I think 11th grade, and um, uh, I was on probation, and my grandfather talked me into like, oh no, they gonna they gonna let you off because I was just about to turn. It was like two months before my birthday, um, to turn 18. So they like, oh, we gonna let you off probation officer. Oh, we gonna let you off the judge. Gonna let you off early. You, you turn and grown. You adult. They gonna let you go. So I'm like, all right, I go to court. Next thing you know, my grandfather get up there and say, Your Honor, can you please lock him up? You know, you know, he, he getting in trouble. You know, we need him, you know, to go away. So I wound up going away, you know, to this um, place called Glen Mills at the time. It, it was it's, it's really like a campus. You know, you really can turn your life around there. But so it's a second chance place. Yeah. Where they see a future and they're yeah. trying to give you a second chance. Yeah. At life. And yes. so you went to this institution. Did this change your life? No, because I just went there to did the 
did the one year and came home when I was 19. I didn't. I mean, I did. Of course, I did, you know, my schooling and all that just so I can get out. Um, But I didn't take it as I should have took it. You know, the potential that it, it has so many. It helps so many people today that I know, you know. So uh, at that point in time, you still your heart um, had not been um to the point where you wanted to change you wanted um a better life you still wanted to um run the streets and you still thought that was you was still, we can use the word you used earlier you were still curious about the streets and i believe when we were talking before in one of our interviews you you said that it it was so easy for you when you got arrested and when you got locked up to make it through that system. So you didn't have any apprehension or you didn't have any fear of being locked up again and what will happen to you because you knew you could work the system. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, first time I got locked up, uh, it was a place called the Youth Study Center um, here in Philadelphia for, for, for juveniles. And uh, I used to hear stories, but uh, when I went there, <coughs> excuse me, excuse me. The first time I got locked up at 13, I went there for a few days and it wasn't bad as I thought it was. Uh, I made it through them few days. Uh, and once I made it through them few days, I was like, oh, I can, you know, I can do this. You know, not saying I wanted to go back there, but it was more so like this ain't what, you know, the stories I heard. You know what I mean? So, right, so you know, right, that, right. That would make me not be fair of selling drugs anymore. Because if I get caught and, and go back there, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, afraid of the stories that was told to me about the place. So now you're in prison, <laughs> no longer in juvenile. Now you're in actual prison now. And so, did the selling drugs escalate to you taking drugs? Um, of course because I love the party. And uh, when I came home from the juvenile place at 19, um, of course I got back into the, the drug game and, you know, I love partying. I love drinking, I love smoking weed and I love going to the bars and the after hours. So um, that led to my demise of uh, one night, you know, I'm hanging out and we at the bar and I'm chilling with, you know, a couple people and, um, we go to this app <laughs> and we go to the bar and you know this girl, she pull out, you know, some powder. And I'm like, you know, if it ain't, if it ain't, she offered to, I'm like, no, I'm cool. You know, I don't do that. But then later on again, you know, we drinking and partying and all that. And then she offered, I'm like, man, I'm looking at her. I'm like, ain't nothing wrong with her. So ain't nothing going to be wrong with me. And, you know, I tried it and, you know, that was like really the downfall of, of, of like snorting the powder. And um, later on that night, I, um, I wound up leaving them and I wanted some more powder, but I didn't have powder. I had like crack in my pocket. So for me being around, you know, uh, addicts that get high and being selling out, out of the, you know, the crack house, I see the, I see the stuff that they do. So I just, you know, always had weed on me. So I just smashed the bag and, and, and was like, just like powder, you know what I mean? And I just put it in my weed at night and, you know, start leasing. And that was like really, you know, that was really, you know, the downfall right then. Okay. And at so the age of 19. At the age, wow, tender age of 19. Yes. So now you find yourself on the same road that your mom was on. And that's when you said in the beginning of the interview, you understood at some point because you followed in those same um, footsteps. And so now you're 19. Now you're, you know, you're, you're on heavy drugs. Now you're in and out of jail, in and out of rehab centers. Um, what point in your life did this change occur? And what we're going to do is we're going to have you to just think about it for a minute um, while we go to a commercial break. What I would like to do is just show you a little of the footage um, that um, I was able to um, tape at the part one of this interview, live on set of The Diary of a Changed Man. Again, we're interviewing Marlon Reed from Marlon Reed Production. He is an author of over seven books and more to come. His first book, The Diary of a Changed Man, um, was um, 
filmed. <laughs> it was filmed um, the last two weeks and it's going to be a movie um, on his life. And I believe that this movie will, I pray, change the lives um, of other young men that may be finding themselves in the same um, the same predicament and don't know what to do and that they can find um, hope as Marlon eventually found hope. And maybe they don't have to take the same road that um, Marlon um, chose to take in his life. And so we hope that this book, this movie will go forth and change the lives of so many people. Again, my guest today is Marlon Reed from Marlon Reed Production. Um, we're going to show you a little bit of footage on set of The Diary of a Changed Man. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Melissa Johnson with Marlon Reed on the set of The Diary of a Changed Man. We're doing this in different segments. Hey, we may have to do something different this time. Um, we're gonna talk on this segment a little bit about how this film came to be. First of all, let's talk about the book, The Change, um, The Diary of a Changed Man. Can you tell me, Marlon, why did you want to um, write an autobiography about your life. Yes, um, the Diary of a Changed Man came forward uh, 2014 um, when um, you know I was go out on the streets of Philadelphia and speak around there about the violence and spreading the gospel of Christ. So a lot of people would ask me, did I have a book to share my testimony? So I wound up, you know took their advice and went ahead and wanted to share it because I wanted to show people the development of an addict. A lot of times people get to see the development of a kingpin and becoming an addict just don't start by a person picking up. It, it starts through maybe their childhood, which has happened with mine as far as though everything I went through, you know, as a child, you know what I mean, led up to the street decisions of going into the streets at 13, getting arrested at the age of 13 selling drugs for the first time. So I wanted to show people the development of an addict versus to the development of a kingpin. And um, that was, the, that was the, 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 the blessing behind it. And I wanted to show people God's glory through my story to show you how God interacted in my life and, and just constantly saved me like a cat nine lives. You know, so I had to realize, you know, this would be the tenth one. It might be the final one. So I recognized the tools that he put around me by sending me to prison and helping me, you know, get back in touch with him spiritually, mentally, and physically. So, you know, the diary of a changed man is a blessing. Yes. Okay, I think he's getting ready to go back and shoot. So we'll finish this up in a minute. Thank you. Thank you. And welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. So we have a lot of footage from that um, particular set. And so we're just um, excited about it. And we have a lot of uh, pictures as well. And as I looked at the um, other actors that was in the um, movie on set filming, how excited they was to be a part of this project. It just made my heart extremely um, glad. And I just, you know, wish the best um, for your movie, for your books, you. for your ministry. So Thank again, you. welcome back, Marlon Reed, to the Brilliant Black Man Show. And we're going to move quickly now, Marlon. I know you're under the weather, so I'm going to be mindful of your time. So let's move forward now. Let's move forward to the um, age of, let's move forward to the age of 28. What happens to you? Um, we know you're in and out of jail and all of that, but at some point, some point, something happened in your life that want that wanted you or something, let me say it a different way. Something occurred in your life that stopped you and wanted and you wanted to change directions. You wanted to um you wanted to change um, your lifestyle. Was there an event that occurred 
or were you just tired of living this particular way or did you get sick what happened in your life at this age because we're talking about from the age of 13 and now you're 28 that's 15 yes. years and guess yes. what at 28 and i do i have that right because i have that in my mind but i don't know if that's your mom's age yes. Is, was it 28 for you as well um yes yes um it was it was actually 29 but from 19 to, 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 to 29 um I was in and out of jail. Uh, well, I used to only get high for is I used to only get high for like five, four or five months, and I go into rehab because I was lacing and you know snorting. So I would go into rehab, but I was still selling drugs, you know, with the guys on the street. So it was just I was getting high. So I would go into rehabs, get myself together, and do all that. And um, at the age of twenty eight, I start smoking the straight, which is the pipe. And uh, I went for like a whole year, you know, I never got high a whole year in my entire life until then. Um, it just took me down a different direction of smoking a straight. You know, it was it was it was different. I wasn't hanging out at the bars when I wasn't, you know, having fun. It was just everything about was was getting high. And uh, around that time, you know, it was at the time, but, you know, it was, you know, my friend. Yeah. I'm losing you, Marlon. I was smoking it straight. Up. So just one day out the blue, I tell my wife I wake up about six o'clock. You know, they wake me up. My wife. We're going to take a break. And, um, Marlon, we're going to take a break. We, we keep getting a lot of interference. We're going to take a, a quick break. Welcome to the Brilliant Black Man Show, created to bring to light the success stories of black men all around the world. It is the mission and goal of Melissa Johnson to share these incredible, talented, and successful men with viewers across the country. Wake up, America, and listen to the interviews of these strong black men who are making a difference in their family, community, boardroom, and the world. They are building empires and leaving a legacy. Their life story and success matters, and it's Melissa's goal to change the narrative of how the black man is portrayed in the media, streets, home, workplace, and beyond. Join Melissa on a journey to bring awareness to the brilliance of the black man, follow the interviews as these men speak on the importance of entrepreneurship, education, financial literacy, legacy building, and building black businesses within their communities. Now, here is your host. Okay, and we're back. Okay, Marlon. Okay, so we are back again. And so we're going to, again, try to resume this conversation. And so one year of just straight drugs. And so now yeah. we're at 28. This is an amazing time because this was the same time that your mother transitioned from this from this lifestyle yeah. as well. And so I'm, I'm sure that was in the back of your head as well. So what occurred in your life that made you want to change? Um, like I say, uh, at the age of 28, I, I, I took it to another level and started smoking um, the pipe. And uh, it took me down a different path from snorting coke or drinking or lacing it, you know, to crack with my weed. It took me to a different level, you know, just wanting it all the time. I didn't want to eat, just, just wanting to get high. And, um, you know, one day I just woke, you know, they woke me up like six o'clock to come out on a shift. And um, I just told my wife, you know, who was my girlfriend at the time, um, look, I can't do this no more. You know what I mean? Look, I need God to put me somewhere because I never got high a year straight like this. I always would get myself together. <clears throat> so I'm telling her that I'm tired. You know what I mean? This ain't me. You know, I can't do this. You know what I mean? And, and I wound up going outside and 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 got arrested. And when I got arrested, I, you know, I went away for like two years. 
and I got a chance to 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 get myself really together. You know, take all the programs um, while I was in jail, and you know, got in touch with my inner self, and um, just got a chance to look back over my life. And I, I made some promises to God as well as God made promises to me, and my so promises. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. So at this point, this one was a little different from when you were 13, 14, 15, um, getting these second chances and you didn't want to take advantage of the second chance. It appears that at this point, you become extremely tired with this lifestyle and you want a change in your life. And it's almost as if you wanted to be arrested and wanted to go to rehab so you can somehow... Um, recover from this lifestyle that you were on or in. Yes, yes. I mean, it, it was it was just tiring to me. Tiring, you know. I was tired because, like I say, I never lived this this deep in the in the, in the game of getting high. You know, I, ne- I never experienced it that deep. I experienced it by wa- always watching, you know, the the, the the different addicts that use the street. You know what I mean? But. Once I got into that lifestyle, I was like, um, this ain't for nobody. But I would just, at that time, only could say me. I'm like, this ain't for me. And I was just, you know, tired of, I, I just wanted something different. I just was like, you know, I'm about to be 30. Whatever I didn't achieve in my 20s, I, I, I ain't going to achieve in my 30s. And my wife was. So you were married pregnant. at the time. You were married. Did you have children? No, we wasn't married. Okay, she was um, just your girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, she was okay. just my girlfriend at the time, and uh, she was like a few months pregnant. And I had a son outside of, I had a son already. He was about, I think seven. Okay, so when you I, had a son around twenty-one years old. Huh? You had a son when you were around twenty-one years old. Correct. Okay, yep. so you had a son around 21, so you already had a son. So your girlfriend, she was together with you for a while. I remember you telling me she was into drugs a little bit. Yes. Um, so she was your girlfriend, and um, you wanted a change. And so we're at like about 29. Now you're in rehab. And so now this is the diary of a changed man. So you land there, and you're crying out to God to help you, to rescue you, because you do not want to continue living this way. What occurs after that? And did anyone during this period of time try to reach out and really help you? And if so, did you just refuse the help, or no one tried to rescue you? Um, I was rescued because I was rescued by God. So... Um, when I got locked up prior, prior to you being this last time during this period of, um, 15 years, did anyone try to rescue you during this time of 15 years, family? Yeah, or friends? Yeah. yeah, of course. My family, um, my friends that I, like I tell you, I always, um, was selling drugs. And, um, so I, I used to be like, you know, still out on the street. So my homies was always, you know, get on top of me about, you know, stand stand right because i would go get right but it was just a problem of stand right i go get right for three four months then you know start snoring and drinking again like my my problem was partying <coughs> excuse me once I, once i learned that partying was my downfall that's when i got myself together and um partying and murderwood street um so you know through them through them years, people, my family and everybody, you know, would try to, you know, really help me. But it was like, I, I tell them I loved it. This, this is what I love. So, so why did you love it so much? I, why, what was it about it that you love? Was it an escape mechanism for you to escape the reality of where you come from, where you've been, what have happened to you? Did it allow you to escape into another world? Is that what you enjoyed about it? Or was it just attractive to you and you just really loved that? And if so, you knowing that this was the same lifestyle that your mother had chose and you saw the end of that journey, did that ever occur to you that this may not be the right choice? Um, I, I just loved it because I was attracted to it. You know what I mean? I was just attracted to everything that was going around, going on around in the neighborhood. You know, at that time it was, 
like a neighborhood that was, you know, you know, um, really doing some things. So, and I just liked it. It wasn't, you know, because of what happened to me or anything. That was in the beginning, you know, when, when I first went out to the streets because of, of that. But far as though, you know, being a grown man, I was like past all that. It was just, you know, I'm, I'm, I was just attracted to it. And um, okay. it was just fun. At the beginning, it was fun until it turned into addiction. Until it turned into an addiction, right. Once it turned into addiction, that's when, you know, I started really seeing a different side. You know what I mean? Uh, and then, like I say, once I started smoking a straight, it was really just a, a straight addiction. So let's you know, stop, so that's, let's stop, let me stop you right here, okay? Because I'm sure there's people viewing this um, this um, podcast and viewing this interview. And so I want you to, at this point, to speak to those that may think this lifestyle is attractive and may think that this lifestyle has a future and that you will not get caught up in um, the addiction or you may not get caught up um, in um, going to jail or you may not get caught. Just for one second, what can you tell them to open their eyes to the truth and not to be deceived by believing a lie? Um, you know, basically, um, tell them that, you know, something that they already know, you know what I mean? They know it can happen, but you know, the same mind frame I had, that ain't going to happen to me. Yes, it can happen to you. And everything that I show people is to show you the negative side of the game. This is the negative side. The same people that you selling to, they used to be you. You know what I mean? They just got caught up because of the party and because of the lifestyle. And it can happen to you. You know what I mean? So, you know, you can get locked up. You can be killed. I was successful enough not to be, you know, killed in, in the game. I was shot, you know, and but God has something greater for me. But right. come on, man, this perception of the culture, don't let them think that none of this stuff can happen to you, man. You got to get out of that mindset. So we stuck in a mindset of, I live for today and not for tomorrow. Now, what if you wake up tomorrow? You know what I'm saying? You got to be prepared for that. Stop saying you living for the day. You need the fast money. You know, we living in a time where jobs is paying, you know, um, more than what they used to pay back in the day. So get out that lifestyle, man. We losing our, it's this black on black crime. It's just, <coughs> it's just a negative time, man. This is not the lifestyle. Stop letting the culture brainwash you stop letting the music brainwash you and think this is the lifestyle because it's not the lifestyle at the end of the tunnel even in all the movies to show you that they either get locked up they That's go right. to jail they get turned out on their own supply right or an innocent person like one of their children caught the straight bullet you know what i mean this is real the reason right. why they could write this stuff because it really happened Really so happens. someone for them to write this stuff. So come on, young people, and even the old people that's in this thing, and to all my people that's trapped in my old lifestyle, man. If you're looking at me and you see God did it for me, God definitely will do it for you, man. Don't yeah. don't never think you can't. And and real quick, I use this for everybody. When Paul was Saul, he was running around cutting people head off that was following Jesus, killing kids. And then he went blind and Jesus, you know, gave him some instructions and he followed them instruction and he became Paul and became one of Jesus greatest followers. So what I'm saying, what I mean by saying that, don't ever think you can't be forgiven because you ain't do what Saul did. And Saul was forgiven into Paul. You know what I mean? So you could be forgiven. Don't don't run around here. Oh, I done did so much. I can't be forgiven. You be forgiven. Go read that story on who Paul was before he was Paul. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, and that's what I like about transformation. You know, you don't have to remain the same. You, you can know. be transformed into the person that you were really created to be. Yes. You don't have to go down this road of destruction. 
Not at all. There is a there is a different road, and this road is a narrow road. But this road yes. leads to eternal life. The yes. road of destruction um, is a broad road, and you will find many people on that road. But you will shipwreck on that road if you stay on it. So we need you to get off of the road of being with the crowd, the road, thinking that it's okay to be in this type of lifestyle. This will not happen to me. I won't get this. I won't do this. We need you to get off of that road and get on that narrow road that leads to your purpose. And that's what it's all about, to lead to your purpose. And so today we're speaking to a man that has found his purpose, that have gotten off of that big, broad road, as is spoken um, of in the Bible. And he has get, he's on the now on the narrow road that leads to eternal life, the life that God has um, purpose for him be, when he was in his mother's womb, when he was conceived and he felt that he was conceived um, in a very different way. Um, God still had purpose for this man's life. And today yes. he Amen. is a testament of the purpose that God had for his life. He is indeed a changed man. He woke Amen. up one day and he was tired of living the life that he was living. And he made a choice to be transformed. He made a choice to give his life over to something that was greater than him in order for him to be the best that he could be. And um, this is this is all about um, uh, all about a redemption, all about restoration. It's yes. all it's all about, you know, it's all about salvation. And I, I mean, I just like your story. And I, I just I just I, I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't pray that this happens to our young black men and young black girls. I would not pray that this would happen to them. However, we know that some people, circumstances are so much, it's just different. And yes. some people don't have choices. And 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 and, and, and I don't want to get into that because that's a lot of um, conversation that we cannot flush out. And so it may be misleading. But I want to say that if you find yourself on this road that um, that is leading you down a road of deception, that's leading you down a road of darkness, that's leading you away from the light. Yes. Get off of that road and change directions. Yes. Change directions. Now, Marlon Reed has changed directions <laughs> and yes. he's no longer the same man. He's still Marlon Reed, but his direction has changed. His purpose has been developed into um, a man on a mission. <laughs> can I say that, Marlon? <laughs> the, man, the man on a mission. How did this book, um, how was it picked up by Kazar? And shouts out to Kazar Entertainment. I was able to meet him. How was this project picked up by Kassar Entertainment? And then how did you get some of the best of the best actors and actresses to um, shoot, to appear in your film? Um, I met, I met Kazar through uh, just networking. Like I got to tell all the authors, we got to network, you know, so I, I, I use, Facebook as my biggest promotion and marketing. And I met Kazar through Facebook and uh, I looked at his credentials, seen he was award winning um, director, had his own, you know, uh, uh, studio, his production company, and seen the other films that he was involved with. So I reached out to him, long story short, he reached back, son of the script, he liked it. And he said, uh, we can move forward because it's it's actually a short film. It's part one, it's two parts. So I did a short film because I know I can get people attention for 25 minutes when it ain't all about killing and, you know, all that. So, you know, I made it two parts of uh, a short film. 
Now, explain to my viewers um, what is a short film, because I'm not sure if we understand that. A uh, short film could be anywhere from like three or seven minutes to like 48 minutes. You know what I mean? That's a short film. And a feature film could be anywhere from, I guess, 50 minutes to three hours. So, okay. yeah, a short film can, can be like 25 minutes, seven minutes. So we shooting to make this film at least, uh, you know, like 40 minutes, um, 45 minutes. So, like I say, I, I choose to do that because I know the whole thing ain't about killing and shooting. And, and nowadays, you know, we live in a time where, you know, where uh, temptation, lust and all that dominate, you know, dominate the world that we in. So I can get people attention for 25 minutes before they, you know, want to change it because it ain't no shooting and killing. OK, so what would be the next step? So Kazar Entertainments, he takes on this project. And he he approves it, approves the script. And so now you guys go to um, actually film the, the short movie. Um, and you did this the last two weeks in um, Baltimore, Maryland. Correct. Now, was this on set at his studio? Where was this um, on set at? Oh, well, this was shot outside. You know what I mean? Like I said, we went from there and, um, you know, he he, he, he he introduced me to uh, Trey Chaney. And, 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 you know, from there, you know, um, he sent him the script and uh, he liked it and he wanted to be on board with the script. So, you know, after that, we just start having auditions and we start picking the people that, you know, I'm so blessed because everybody on the film is uh, is uh, is real talented. They all got films. They all got movies. They all got um, they all got, you know, different different things that that's going on. You know. Yeah, and I heard one one of the guys, I think it's Trey, is it Trey Chaney? Did he was he the one that played Marlon Reed? What was his role in the uh, no, no, he played he played um he played my father. So um sorry for the darkness, but mm -hmm. you know what I mean, like I said, I'm dealing with COVID, so this like the room I gotta be in to uh Okay to core team. So hopefully y'all can get to see me a little bit. Yeah, just don't move around. Just stay in that spot if you can for the next couple of minutes, okay? Um, okay. okay, so Trey Trey Chaney, um, he played your father. Who yeah. played who played your role? Uh, well, the first film is from the time I was like uh 10 up to 19. So my oh, nephew, okay. my nephew played the younger me. Okay. which he did a fantastic job for him being the first time actor. Everybody was so impressed, you know, um, everybody was so amused of how he knew his lines and he was ready to go. And, you know, uh, and, and the person that playing me, uh, uh, the older me at 19, he like 15 in real life, but I went to a um, show and um, a play and I seen him playing in a show called the Shoe Shine Box. And uh, I met his grandmother, who actually playing my grandmother in the movie, and got him to play the part. Wow! So okay, and so it's just it's just so exciting. I mean, I've never been up and close on set <laughs> to um, um, someone filming a movie, so that was very exciting um, for me and for my platform, the Brilliant Black Man Show. So I was extremely excited, and then just to um, just to meet you i met you probably about has it been i know it's been over a year we met on social media yes we're in um, the same book um i think we're in the same book group or something like that and you yes. had just come out with your books and i was advertising my book i had just come out with my book so it has been over a year because my latest book has been out over a year so i believe it's been about a year since we met and um, I just started, we started following each other and I just started watching your work. And um, later on, I said in the back of my head, I want to interview this young man. And the opportunity presented him itself when you start announcing that you were going to make this movie from this book. And so the next step is what, Marlon, after you just shot the film. Now, what is the next step for the diary of a changed man? What has to, what has to, what, what is the next step 
that um, that has to, what is the process? I think that's the that's the um, question. What is the process for us to see it on the big screen? Uh, um, I, I need to ask. Can we take one more break? With because I I am real dark. I'm gonna try to fix this light real fast. Okay, one, and we'll be right back. One second. Welcome to the brilliant black man. Welcome to the Brilliant Black Man Show, created to bring to light the success stories of black men all around the world. It is the mission and goal of Melissa Johnson to share these incredible, talented, and successful men with viewers across the country. Wake up, America, and listen to the interviews of these strong black men who are making a difference in their family, community, boardroom, and the world. They are building empires and leaving a legacy. Their life story and success matters, and it's Melissa's goal to change the narrative of how the black man is portrayed in the media, streets, home, workplace, and beyond. Join Melissa on a journey to bring awareness to the brilliance of the black man. Follow the interviews as these men speak on the importance of entrepreneurship, education, financial literacy, legacy building, and building black businesses within their community. Okay, and we are back. <laughs> and we're gonna, we're gonna go fast. I know this is you know consuming on your body and you're not feeling the best. So no, it's, let's, it's let's good. speed it up a little bit and talk about the production of this the movie. How what is the next step for the movie for it to go to the big screen or will it go to the big screen? What is big screen? What is the next step? Uh the next step for the film is uh we're gonna wrap up the 13th here in Philly. Um in my hometown so we got a couple more scenes we're gonna shoot here and end it up and okay. the goal is to put it in a couple film fests first to get rotation to get noticed uh before we put it out on like uh Tubi and you know all the urban um uh stations that's dealing with independent platforms so um that that's that's the goal just to put it in different film fests to, to get a name out there and uh uh try to have a premiere and right here in the city uh, around October or November, depending on how fast Kazar can edit it. You know what I mean? Try to have a, a premiere at the end of this year. You okay. know, and, and I'm putting and I'm putting it out here on live. <laughs> I'm putting yeah. it on your live that I want to be a part of that premiere. Yeah, <laughs> thank Dustin, you. Dustin, the brilliant black man thank show, must be a part of that show. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. I definitely would love to be there. Okay, so that's the process. So yeah. let's let's talk about, and I'm just so proud of you. My heart is just overwhelmed. Oh, thank you so um, much. I'm just, I'm just, I think it's the work that has been done in your life. I met you personally, and so I I could see the character of the man. And character is so important, um, not just to me, it's so important to God. Yes. <laughs> and so, um, and not just, yes. you know, and it's important as, you know, as a part of your work to have a strong character, you know, it's just, it's so important. Yes. And you have a very yes, sweet spirit about you and you're so Thank memorable you. and you're so humble. And Thank you. that is a working that is done in you. <laughs> and so Amen. it brings me great joy to see where you come from and where you are today. It is right. just amazing right. the work that has been done. And yes. listen, this is this is not something that happens overnight. No process. It's not overnight, people. It's a process, and you have Every to go day. the process. And Still I tell performing you, it. Absolutely, you have to. And and the, and the struggle is real because some days you wake up. Oh my God! And the struggle is there. So it we want did. to be real with you. <laughs> the struggle is there, but guess what? You can overcome. Man, amen. You are an overcomer, amen. and you can win. You can win. Yes. And he has given you the tools to win. And yes. so I am so glad you are winning. Amen. I'm glad you are winning and that Amen. your life has taken a different direction and Amen. that you are producing this these books to help um to win help souls. People. That's right. that's what it's all about. Winning right. souls. It's about it's about living the abundant life that you don't have to remain the same, guys. Amen. 
It's Amen. about living the abundant life. And I'm just so godly proud of you, uh, Marlon. Amen. And so what we're going to change now, because we talked a lot about your upbringing. We talked a lot a bit of a lot about um the journey we talked a lot a bit about the um the book um let me just let me just hold it up this is the book the diary of hey, man. that's the book man i read a lot of it it was so riveting i could barely put it down it Thank was you. a good read i mean Thank it's you. a fantastic um well written book marlon it really mm -hmm. is it is just so interesting Amen. And I could barely put it down and I said my God my God what you have done to this man and so I am so proud about Amen. the book and about the movie and I know the movie is going to be just as great as the book yes. my question to you as we um as we end this conversation today what inspires the man to continue to write where does the drive come from? I know for me, I'm a driven person. We're both book writers. Yes. I write books. Different things inspire me. I mean, I have this internal drive that's driven by purpose, that's, you know, driven by um, who I am in Christ. And so um, tell me with <laughs> in your words. Yes. <laughs> What drives the man, Marlon Reed? What drives you, Marlon? Um, really, really like just the issues um with my books. The first book, like I say, the diary of a changed man was because I went out on Philadelphia and spoke around the streets and shared my testimony and people just used to ask for the book and you know, that's how, you know, that book came about and you know, and the second book was more uh one man journey the next man path. I wanted to show the people that's trapped in my own lifestyle, you know, it's a way out, but more importantly, it's a way to stay out. You know, here goes some keys, you know, here goes some steps, you know, you know, this is how I did it. You know, if it worked for me, it could work for you if you work it. The third book, Man of Thought, was given to me by a, a strong woman of God. She had challenged me to, 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 you know, she always used to say, man of thought, man of thought, that's your next book. So that, you know, uh, con uh, the concepts of me of writing that third book was was more of her giving me that challenge. And uh, by then I wanted to say I wanted to be an author. I said, if I got three books, I'm an author now. And that's what happened. And the fourth book was really that what was going on with, um, you know, in 2020, everything that was going on from uh, George Floyd, um, yeah, yeah. Auburn, and yeah. um, uh, uh, say her name, um, uh, I can't think of it right now. Yes, all that was going on in the same year that just me and that black on black crime yes. that made me write living in a country influenced by hate. <clears throat> Right. And, uh, well, you're influenced. So it's, it, it, it seems to me that you're saying you're influenced. The drive comes from what is happening around you um, in, in your environment. OK, correct. that's the drive for your book. And so um, how do you as a man with that past? Because I know that um, having addictions, uh, although you may not be addicted to the drugs um is there still the thirst for it and if so how do you um not go back into that lifestyle how do you how do you not um i don't know the words i'm trying to say but how do you stay healthy Let's say it like that. how do you stay healthy and not go back to i'm out to lay by i get asked this question all the time for me, even even through my wife, you know, has asked me how, you know, um, for me, once God removes something, it's, it's removed, you know, it's up to you, you know, to, to if, if, you, if you decide to go back to whatever God removed, that's because that's what you wanted. And that's something I don't want. And I know once God removed it, you know, everything that's in front of me, I know God supply your needs. So that's what keep me. For not going backwards that's to keep me from not drinking because i also was a, a alcoholic just as well as i was a, a addict 
you know, so I don't smoke cigarettes because smoking cigarettes, I used to lace my crack with cigarettes. You know what I mean? So everything worked together. And when God remove it, it's, got, it's done. I'm at peace sitting on my couch watching TV or sitting in my room watching TV because this is what God allowed me to do. I party for 16 years. So whatever I ain't getting them 16 years, it don't it don't drive me no more. You know what I mean? And that's not for everybody. I know people that got all drugs and they still like my wife. She still go out and, you know, she have fun at the bar with her girlfriends and all that. You know, some people do that. But for me, I don't even give it a chance. That's just me. I don't people say it's that deep with cigarettes. Yeah, because I used to lace with cigarettes. So it's that deep. I'm not saying if I smoke a cigarette, that would happen. But I'm not even giving it the opportunity. If you don't plant the seed, the seed right. can't grow. Seed can't grow, right? You know what I mean. So when God it, removes, but it only takes it only takes one it only takes one drink, and yeah. then you know it can lead to but that's something because, else. That's because something you wanted. Now, if if you stop because God removed it, then it's a done deal. You understand what I'm saying? It's a difference from you stopping on your own and you asking God to remove it. That's how I'm looking at it. You know, for me and everyone's and, and I would like to say that everyone's journey is different yeah. okay? because there are there are cases where he could just take the taste away from you. And there are cases that that it doesn't happen that way. And you have to you have to stay in a safe environment for yourself. Right. You there are certain things that you can't go around certain places you cannot go because it's a it's a temptation for you. So you have to know that. Right. You know what? For me, I believe I believe that God removed it. It's done. You know what I mean? Um, I get into them battles with people, but I let people have their own choice. That's for me because I'm like, man, I was in it strong, and I'm like, if if God removed it, it's it's removed. You know what I mean? I believe if we relapse, I believe that's because that was something we want. Not because people, places, and things. Because I'm around people, places, and things all the time. Because I got to go back and show God's glory. Mm -hmm. You know, you understand what I'm saying? If I stay away from people, places, and things, now I'm being selfish. Oh, I might get high. No, I got to show you what God done, my man. You know what I mean? Look, me and you used to run the streets together. Me and you used to sell drugs together. You ain't got sell drugs no more. Me and you got felonies. You know, I went to state prison, federal prison, county. Uh, uh, and, and juvenile, but I still got a good job because I brought things to the table. You understand what I'm saying? So I got to go back and show them drug dealers that you don't need to sell drugs or you can have felonies and you still can do it. You just got to do an extra work. I got to go back and show the people that smoke and crack. You ain't got to smoke crack. Look at me. But now if I don't go around people, places, and things because I'm scared I'm going to get high, then you know, I'm being selfish, and that's not for everybody. I'm talking about. It's not, and, that, and I like right, and it's not for everyone. This is I'm just, I'm just, I just, I just feel as though if God removed it because it's God, like we we say that God don't make no mistakes. So it's like if God remove it, and you go relapse. Like say if I go relapse, that's because I wanted to. Because mm -hmm. God removed it out my system. If I go relapse and pick a drink up or a cigarette or whatever I used to do, or go out and sell drugs or go out and start hanging in the streets the same way as not being in the streets, you know, talking peace or, or spreading the gospel, then that's because I wanted to. You know what I mean? It had to be right. some type of want for you, for me. I mean, yes. for me. And we, you know and, I mean? and we hope that the people that are viewing this would have that desire not to want <laughs> to have that lifestyle. So as we as we conclude our talk on today, Marlon, um, your motto is strong leadership, accountability, and structure. Um, why are those things important to you in the next minute or so? Why are those so important to you? Because I learned like as we live in today, the world, or if I can say America, you know, they remove God out of a lot of places. So now we have chaos. And I believe when you ain't got order or structure, that's bring chaos. And that's what we see in today. Um, so I learned 
in my life and then in my journey to to be a leadership in my household first and a leadership to myself. Mm-hmm. I had to put some structure in order to get structure. I had to go by order. And that's what I did. And I took, you know, my last book, Men Do Help Men. That's a little ministry I start that help people. And I went you know, and I went under you know, these words, understanding, um, correction, direction, discipline, vision, ministry, and information. I took those seven words and added it to my life. And, you know, that's what keep me structured. And, you know, I wrote a book on it. And I believe it can help, you know, you know, man, woman, or child. I believe those seven words can be a process in someone's life, can manifest in someone's yeah. life. Now, um, l- my last question before we do the takeaways. What, um, how do you rear your children? Um being, uh, you know, how you were raised, how do you, um, how do you teach and train your children? What do you implement in, in their life? What was most important? Because I know we can't go through the whole process of how you raised your kids, but what was most important as you raised your cheer, children to instill in them? Um, the same way my grandparents instilled in me, my grandfather. Uh, whatever it may be, I, I show I show my two daughters, you know, and uh, me and my son, I really couldn't show him like far as though living in a household because we didn't live together. Um, but you know, my two children that live, my two young children live with me. I wanted them to show them leadership, and you know, I wanted them to show show them a father, you know, leadership, so regardless of whatever you know may be the situation. They can always say, you know, my dad. You know, he was a father, you know, he was married. Um, it wasn't about him, it was about us. And, you know, I just instill things in them and, and try to show them, you know, to be prepared for when they go out in the streets. Uh, you know, this when they leave out the store every day, like I did, you got this your choices you gonna make. Now, I know I did my part. If you choose to do something different when you go out that door, I know I did my part. Yeah, right, right. And, I really appreciate this conversation. I could probably talk to you the next two hours, but I, we don't have that type of time. And I don't think your body can make it through another two hours. That's but right, because God got like, me covered. I'm covered by the blood, so I'm, all right. I'm good. Would, what would you like for our viewers to take away um, from this conversation? Three things that, three things, one, two, three, that you would like our viewers to take away from conversation that we had on today one god is real Mm -hmm. two change is possible and three please have faith in everything that you do wow that's good (laughs) god is real change is possible and faith yes i would like to thank marlon reed of marlon reed production um, for all that he is doing um, in um, Philadelphia and around the world to bring about change. He said change is possible. God is real. And you must have faith to believe. And I say to believe. Can I say one thing? I had a radio show called It's a Way Out, but most importantly, it's a way to stay out. And that's what it, when I mean change. Change is possible, but Stay in change is, is the thing that we want to work on. And thank you for what you're doing because, man, you come to people. You know, you, you in North Carolina, you came all the way to Baltimore to do interviews. So the things that you're doing and showing people, flat, uh, showing men uh, platforms, man, uh, you know, keep doing what you're doing. You're a strong woman in, 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 in our community, a strong queen and uh, a, a great woman of God. And, and we thank you for that my pleasure. And so I just like to thank um, Marlon Reed again for the work he's doing. And listen, it's Marlon Reed production. Um, Go to amazon.com. Go go to these platforms to purchase his book, support 
this man, for support his work, that he may continue to shed light into a dark world. Amen. Watch out for his film. I, I, I pray blessings upon that film. I look forward to being at the premiere. <laughs> no, definitely. And I have it without you. Please, please look at this platform that you put it on around the world. Definitely can't have it without you. I, I look forward to that. I, I look forward to seeing it on the big screen. I I just I am just so godly proud of you as a um, just as an African American woman. I'm just uh, extremely Thank proud you. at what God has done in your life and what He's doing in your life and your family. Thank and you. um, I just thank you for allowing me to come into your world um, these last <laughs> couple of months. Come into your world Amen. and learn a little bit more about you. What a beautiful story and um, the 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 the. The end is better than the beginning. It's always so the beginning is a lesson. Yeah, thank God for learning the lessons, you yes. know. And um, um, thank God for your journey. Amen. And it 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 has all worked together for your good. It has all worked together for Amen. your good for his glory. And I'm just so um happy about that and when we talk about success this is what success is and yes. this is why i do these interviews this is personal success this is marlon reed success this is his story this is his journey um it's time for you to recognize who you are and get on that road of purpose Thank you can you. also realize personal success that you can change the world. You. <laughs> you can change the world, and that your print will last way after you are gone. Now, yes. what are you going to do? It's time for you to get up, it's time for you to grow up, and it's time for us to get to work. It's a lot of work to be done. Yes. And person can't do it. We're all pieces of this puzzle. We yep. need your piece to fit together yes. to make it a better world. Thank you again, Marlon Reed, for being a part of the Brilliant Black Man Show. Yeah. Can, I, can I just thank everybody that was a part of me starting to write the book, uh, my process of, of walking through this journey. Um, everyone in the film, the whole film crew, from the cameraman to to all the actors, just thank everyone that had a part of helping me uh, just to grow every day. Because I didn't do this, alone. I didn't do it right. just for God. Um, it started with God, and God put the tools around me. Absolutely. Yeah, he thank uses people. All the people. Can't name all y'all. Thank all the people would help me from the books, from the film, from uh, ministry from uh, 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 this being a mentor to me, a leadership, everyone. Thank you to my family, my friends, everyone. Thank you. And thank you, Ms. Melissa Johnson. Thank the uh, uh, Brilliant Black Man Show for having me. My pleasure. And this has been Melissa Johnson of Wild wow Ministries with the Brilliant Black Show. And my guest today was Marlon Reed. And we are signing off. And we hope you have a wow kind of day. Thanks for tuning into the Brilliant Black Man Show with Melissa Walker Johnson on the TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more information and to watch any of the past inspiring interviews of the BBM shows, you can follow the tour at The Brilliant Black Man Show on YouTube or WowMinistriesLLC.com. These successful men's stories are worth sharing with the world. Wow Ministries, inspiring the world with The Brilliant Black Man Show.